mute myself. Wait, am I muted? Yeah. Can you guys hear me? We so can hear you. Yay, thanks guys. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna go into a time of worship. Um, maybe we'll just bow our heads and I'll pray us in. Um, dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for each and every individual who decided to come out today. Um, I thank you so much for those who came from Penn State. I think that's amazing. Um, just seeing the way that you're working in our fellowship, um, just out of state nationwide, Lord, it's so awesome to see that. Um, yeah, as we just continue through this night, just be able to give us peace, um, any nerves, um, be with our speaker today. Um, may we just really open our hearts and open our eyes to you and what you're telling us tonight. Um, maybe use this time of worship to really get our hearts in the right place, um, to worship you, to find joy in you. And so, yeah, I thank you so much for this time and just pray. Amen. Draw me 
to your side. And as I pray, oh, as a black and eagle, and I will sow with you, your spirit leads me on. By the power of your love And I will sow with you Your spirit leads me on By the power of your love
Father, I just thank you so much for this time of worship. Um, may this have just really um, be set in our hearts um, to focus on you, to focus on our love for you, um, just realizing how much joy you give us in just some um, tumultuous times, Lord. Um, but I just pray for Phoebe as she's going to be speaking. Uh, may you speak through her. Um, may her words be your words. Um, just ease any nerves um, in her heart. Um, yeah, may you just also be with us as we go into um, discussion groups after. Um, be with all the discussion group leaders. And I thank you so much for this time. And just pray. Amen. That one person who, like, mid worship was like, oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah, for real. Um, everybody go ahead, drop some love in the chat for worship team. Uh, thank you so much, Sam and Anna for, uh, yeah, just leading worship for us tonight. And yeah, look at those comments coming in. Woo! Um, so I have the wonderful privilege and honor of welcoming our speaker for the night. Um, her name is Phoebe Lamb, for those of you, to, for those of you who do not know her. Um, she is an Epic Slow alum and uh, she's also my boss, she was my manager at uh, Phonathon. If you know, you know. Um, but yeah, I have a very special memory with Phoebe. Um, so when I was a freshman, some naive little freshman coming in, uh, I was so like so like pumped about college and so excited to be here. And um, yeah, there was this one particular large group where like we just went over some of like the things in our life that maybe like cause us pain or like, you know, what area of our life hurts the most, things like that. And um, yeah, like for me, like personally a tough area is like my family life. And so during the second set of worship that night when uh, they're like, oh, you can go up to somebody, ask for a prayer. I went up to Phoebe. She had no idea who I was at the time. Um, I went up to her and she was like, oh, what's your name? And then I just started crying. And so she never learned my name that night, um, but it's like such a super like special memory because even though I couldn't tell her what my name was or like what I needed prayer for, she just prayed for me. Um, and that's the kind of heart that Phoebe has. So we're so excited and like just honored and blessed to have her speak for us tonight on the topic of prayer. So uh, yeah, Phoebe, if we're gonna spotlight you real quick, let's see. Oh, there we go. Um, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Um, <I> just, <laughs> 
<laughs> and pray for you um, before you get started. And so if everyone wants to join me and just, uh, yeah, praying for Phoebe tonight. Um, Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for being the reason that we have community, being the reason why we get to live our lives every day and, uh, yeah, be able to pursue joy and happiness even in the midst of our struggles or whatever it is that like, whether it's this pandemic or whether it's our classes, kicking our butts, going into week four and five with midterms and everything like that. And uh, yeah, we just thank you so much for paying the ultimate sacrifice, for dying for us on the cross, um, to forgive us of our sins, something that we are so not worthy of, something we did not deserve, but uh, because of your love, your grace and your mercy that, yeah, we we get to have a life that is unimaginable with you. Um, and just to be able to start pursuing that, Lord, we just ask that um, tonight we just hear some of your words of wisdom through Phoebe, um, the words that you've blessed her with. And uh, yeah, just hear a little bit of how we can just keep praying or keep our life prayerful, um, keep our relationship with you intentional. And yeah, we just are so excited to hear what um, you have to say for us tonight uh, through your daughter, Phoebe, through your faithful servant. And yeah, we just thank you so much for allowing her to be able to free up some time to come join us tonight. Um, and we just want to lift up some prayers for people in our ministry. Um, shout out to the uh, people from Penn State that are joining us, Lord, that uh, you would just make this time uh, welcoming for them, that they wouldn't have to feel so awkward being the new kids on campus, uh, per, so to say, um, that they can enjoy this night as well, that they can um, just really have their heart in, in, uh, into it. Um, as well as everyone else that's joining us tonight, whether it's their hundredth time or their uh, first time. And we want to just lift up prayers for all the other ministries uh, on our campus, Lord, that are yeah, just trying to figure out what to do in this virtual setting. Uh, we just want to keep praying for them. And we're just praying that they are keeping prayerful as well. Um, so we just want to lift those up to you, God. And we thank you so much. In your name, pray. Amen. Amen. Wow. Thanks. You're muted. Phoebe. Oh, hello. Can you hear me? Oh my gosh. Yeah, so very Zoom 2020 of me to do that. Um, uh, so excited uh, to be here. Thanks, Kevin, for giving me that spectacular intro. Um, yeah, I'm so excited to be here and to to see a lot of faces, like I'm just scrolling and I'm like, yes, new face, new face, yes. Like I don't get to do this in real life, but I get to do it on Zoom and kind of just glance over who I've never seen before, but also see some old faces. So this is exciting and I'm so excited to be here. Um, so yeah, I, I think Kevin did a really good intro of myself, but for those who've like never seen me before and you're like who's this girl on my zoom um i i just a quick little intro about myself um i graduated last year so i'm still pretty fresh um i still think i'm a freshman in college i do give off the energy still uh, still clueless still eats chick-fil-a every day still that kind of vibe um I'm still that person, um, <laughs> but I, I actually studied history and entrepreneurship uh, at Cal Poly, and then now I'm actually residing in the Bay Area, and I'm doing like full-time work, doing some tech sales, so if any of you guys are interested in history or sales, uh, let's chat. I'll drop my info in the comments, and um, yeah, I'd love to chat with you about that stuff. Um, but yeah, for those who are familiar with me, that's stuff that you probably might know or not. Um, but maybe, I guess if you don't know me on a deeper level or just kind of just knew me as this one person that served on Epic and did large group or did community group, short girl, energetic, but didn't really know who I was in my background. Um, I just love to share a little bit of behind me, um, a little bit of, about me. And um, yeah, I'll start with that. So I actually grew up in a Chinese church. Um, both my parents are pastors. And let me tell you, I did like all the Christian things, right? I went to this thing called Awana, which was like this Bible verse memorizing kind of camp that we did every Wednesday night. And I also went to like Friday night fellowship, like 
Saturday sports ministry. And then I also did like church on Sundays. Like I did all the things church growing up. Um, and however, when I reached, so like I, I did all those things. I loved it. I, it, it was like my life. Church was like my life. Um, when I came, when I went into middle school, um, which honestly wasn't that long ago, but I was like invited to join this student leadership kind of like group um, that one of my junior high advisors, his name was Uncle Andrew, um, that he like invited me into. Um, so let me paint a little picture. So Uncle Andrew was this, this middle-aged man who had like teenage daughters. He was great. He served the youth group and he had this like fantastic comb over. He like had the tucked in white polo in the jeans, like the new balance, if you know what I'm talking about, like, but not like the cool new balance, but like, you know, new balance, right? And he played the guitar, he like led worship and who's just like your classic uncle that you grew up with at church. So Uncle Andrew, or UA for short, um, led this like almost elitist, like I put this in quotes because it wasn't elitist, but this this leadership group that everybody wanted to join. Um, yeah, and it, it was, you were only invited by Uncle Andrew and like he would kind of just scout you out for it. And he'd like invite you like, hey, like, I want you to join this, this student leadership group. And so like this, you know, churchy Phoebe, who's like in middle school over here was so ecstatic to join when UA um, asked me to be a part of it. So I said, yes, he was like, when he asked me, Phoebe, do you wanna be a part of the student leadership? I said, yes. And so keep in mind, I had like no idea what was coming for me. Um, I just knew that a couple older kids in my youth group did it. And, and I always looked up to those older, older kids at church. So when the time came around for student leadership for my turn, like I just like didn't know what to expect, right? And I was going into this completely blind, like not knowing what I was getting myself into. So I signed up and guys, just let me tell you, like for my eighth grade maturity and spiritual maturity level, like it was awful, right? Every Thursday night at 8 p.m. we would gather at his house and UA made us like memorize like this one Bible verse, um, Acts 2, 42 to 47. And he like made us recite it like every week. And then he would like, like set aside prayer um, at the beginning of the meetings um, for like 30 minutes straight, right? Okay, we're like eighth grade. So like attention span is not there. Like I still can't even, like this is like, this is a lot. This is like a lot asking for an eighth grader, right? But he made us like pray during these 30 minutes, right? And we practice this ax prayer model. And this ax model, um, for those have like, for those who've done prayer with me, <laughs> um, it's a, uh, adoration confession thanksgiving and supplication and so you know eighth graders there's like a few of us in there right and we would like finish in like four minutes but then he would make us wait for the rest of the 30 minutes so we're just sitting there quietly like with our eyes closed and they're like, just like low-key falling asleep because we're so tired it's like eighth grade so hard right and so like we would have the rest of the 30 minutes in silence and to me, this whole student leadership felt like, you know, Christian boot camp. And none of us knew what we were getting ourselves into, right? We just thought it'd be like, we're all the cool Christian kids hang out. But really, it was like intense, like Bible, like boot camp and prayer boot camp, right? But as we kept showing up week after week, right? Acts 2:42 to 47 was just ingrained into our memory. And like 30 minutes of prayer eventually became an hour to two hours. And like for the first time in my life, like I just saw real discipline, um, real discipline and real tangible growth. So I share this story about my student leadership because, you know, maybe some of you guys are experiencing what I experienced um, in the past, right? Uh, a disciplined, like growing prayer life. You know, maybe you're in a spot of flourishing growth. You know, you found like a solid routine, right? You found a space with God and it's intimate, it's full of hope and it feels effortless. 
Like if you can imagine for me, like really quick, like your prayer life, it's, it looks like a greenhouse, right? And things are just like sprouting, like the fauna is going off. Like we see like, you know, Monstera, like air plants and like, sorry, I just, I just like really into plants recently, but just, just a lot of species, right? And, and like, it's exciting and it's like new stuff, right? And it feels nice and safe and secure and refreshing and, or in other words, like your prayer life, it just looks healthy, right? Maybe some of you guys are in that spot. Or you are me right now with my prayer life. Like a greenhouse, but like the plants are dying. Like there's not enough water. Like it's like cactus vibes. Like we out in here in the desert. You know what I mean? Like I'm talking about prayer life that is out of routine, right? It feels like an effort to bring anything to God. It feels unnatural. It feels lonely. It feels confusing or hypocritical it's it's faithless it's hopeless and it's it's out of touch and most days you know for me like prayer right now is something it's kind of like the last thing I want to do because it can be seriously painful in the season to trust a God in the mess of the world we live in today and I'm like really hoping as I'm saying this that some of you guys like that that resonates with you or um yeah, I'm just really hoping that I'm not alone in feeling that. So I was talking to my therapist this past week and shout out to therapy, go get some of that and talk to me if you ever need help finding one. Um, let's normalize talking about mental health and therapy. Um, and, I, and I told her that I was speaking at my old fellowships large group on prayer. And I was just honest. I told her, I feel like I haven't prayed in like, six months like 2020 was just not it for me and I, I know some of you guys are feeling that and and I just kept telling her how I just felt so hypocritical for talking about something that I don't really practice enough daily or I feel silly about talking about growth specifically in prayer when I'm not even praying or growing and I think it just clicked to me in that moment when I kind of said that, said that out loud, or I proclaimed my honest thoughts to my therapist. It clicked that in my honesty, in my lacking, and in my lowest, that God was calling me to pray. And it, it didn't click to me that, you know, God was asking me to be disciplined. He wasn't asking me to be healthy or flourishing at that moment. But I think it was God asking me to be honest to him in prayer. So, and if any of this, you know, resonates um, with you, um, and if you're feeling like this deep, deep fogginess in, in your prayer life, or just like in your walk with the Lord right now, like, I acknowledge that, and that I would say that even though, you know, I wasn't praying an hour straight and memorizing Bible verses every day of 2020, it still felt like there are seeds of growth. And I started to begin to be honest at where I was at. So I want to leave you guys with something a pastor preached on a while back about prayer that really stuck with me. Um, he defined prayer as this. He said, prayer is an action of faith as we trust the Lord that he would fulfill his will in his time and in his own way. I'm just going to like read that again. Um, prayer is an action of faith as we trust the Lord that he would fulfill his will in his time in his own way. So prayer right now can look very routine. It can look easy. Um, but in other seasons, and to be honest, in a lot of seasons, it could look not like that at all. But I think, you know, at the end of the day, prayer is an action of faith and trust that the Lord can and will move, right, no matter how high or how low we feel. So Epic, as I'm closing out um, in this time, I just want to kind of just challenge um, you that you would just pray, right? Just not out of obligation or routine or even circumstance, but 
but out of pure faith that the Lord's work will be accomplished in your heart, in your community, and beyond. And that's something that I just really desire for you guys. And I know this season isn't easy. I know like when we were going through in our prayer time before a large group, I, I sense like deeply like Epic has been feeling like isolated individually. Like it's hard to connect. And I just want to affirm you guys, like it's not only an Epic thing, but also this is happening post-grad outside of Epic. And I feel with you and, and it's hard and it's difficult. And, but I, I do encourage you all to lean into prayer, um, to be honest in it and to, to be with God in it as well. Um, take that step of faith and, and be honest is what I'll kind of just asking of you guys today. And so, yeah, I mean, with that being said, I, I'd love to um, kind of just close this out in just a little bit of word of prayer and then can go through some discussion questions with um, your D groups and whatnot. But um, yeah, feel, feel free to um, bow your heads, close your eyes, and, and I'll, I'd love to pray a blessing over um, Epic, um, a sweet, sweet place or sweet community um, to my heart. So um, yeah, dear God, I'm so, so thankful for um, this group of people that, you know, are just so committed to your community. God, like Kevin was saying, like, it could be anywhere in the world, but they choose to be in a Zoom room tonight. And they chose to, to experience you, Lord, and to experience your community, God. And I'm thankful that they chose you tonight, Lord. And so yeah, Lord, I don't know what season Epic is in. Um, I feel feel like I don't know at all. And I don't know what everyone is up to right now. But Lord, I pray that you would meet them right where they're at. And that you would open their hearts. That they would be honest to you tonight. Honest in front of their brothers and sisters, God. And that they could find community in that, Lord. God, I ask that you would move in, in D groups tonight, Lord. And would you um, be a blessing, Um in those moments, in those intimate moments, um, as I encounter you and community tonight, God. And so um, thank you, Lord, for this time. And I pray that you would, yeah, watch over this con these conversations tonight. So in your name, I pray. Amen. Sweet. Um, so I, 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 I'm not sure I have the discussion questions. <laughs> um, and I could I could list them off, but I think Kevin over here, my homie, is gonna gonna maybe flash them on the screen, and so you guys don't have to have to look back and forth. But some questions that I just really hope you guys just kind of just I don't know soak in or kind of marinate in or just think about um, are these three questions. And so well, number one is what does prayer mean to you in this season? Um, what does it look like? Um, to be faithful in prayer in this season. And then lastly, most importantly, what are some of your prayer requests? Um, so take those questions and run and pray. Um, and um, I'll hand it off to Kevin. <laughs> All right, thanks Vivi. Um, yeah, it's just so sweet hearing from you again. And um, I think for me, um, I really like how you're saying when we're being honest with ourselves, that's that's where those seeds of growth are planted. And I think for me, um, I was actually talking to my housemate Ellie about this the other day. We were talking about prayer, um, and I think it's just been a season of tacking prayer on um, at the end of a quiet time because it feels like, oh, I, that feels like what I'm supposed to do. And so I think changing our posture of prayer to, um, yeah, just a more willing heart to pray. Um, I think that's a really good reminder. And I think that starts with being honest and realizing like, oh, when I tack a you know, casual prayer onto the end of my quiet time, that's not necessarily coming with the right heart. Um, so it starts with being honest, but thanks, Vivi. Yeah, I think um, something that really resonated with me was that last kind of like quote she mentioned, but this part of it is that like prayer is an action of faith. I think that's something that really is like carries a lot of weight in it because a lot of times we think of 
prayer as just some words that we say to God, maybe, um, you know, like if I was 